Alrighty. Welcome to uh, another edition of the Southern Sound Podcast. I'm your host, Cameron Tuftabai, joined by Alex Goldberg and Dr. Justin Quinn. I'm just going to set the groundwork right away, and um, then we'll get into things. This this podcast might be titled The Emo Adoka Situation and How Not to React to Breaking News, um, because we're going to try to be level-headed and critique the chaos that has been Thursday. It's 4 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. At any point during this podcast, news might break that will change what we think we know right now. But we also think that maybe this situation will take more than a few days to resolve. So let me get people caught up to speed very quickly. Alex and Justin, how are you? Stressed? Me too. So uh, last night, ESPN reports that Ime Odoka is facing uh, a, a punishment of a sort from the Boston Celtics with very little detail, other than that it's significant. A few hours later, The Athletic and Sean Strania report that Udoka has had a consensual, intimate relationship with a female staffer. Um, And soon after that, we have learned that Udoka could face a suspension as long as a year. Now, Thursday afternoon, it looks like Udoka will, in fact, receive a year-long suspension. There's reporting from SI and elsewhere that Udoka has thought about resigning, which we can get into. Um... And that more information is obviously to come. Assistant coach Jay uh, Mazzula, I hope I'm saying that Joe. right. Hmm? It's Joe Mazzula. Oh, Joe Mazzula. Sorry, 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 Mr. Mazzula. Coach Mazzula. You got um, a little Larinaga over there. Uh. Yeah. Uh, is set to become the interim head coach. We'll get into that as well. So that's what we think we know right now, as best as it's been reported. We're going to try to delineate between good reporting and speculation which apparently is harder than you might think nowadays. So, Alex, uh, give me your 30-second take on where we're at. Um, Where we're at is that the Celtics are dealing with a pretty unprecedented crisis in their organization uh, and in their uh, general structure and plan for what we thought was going to be a championship contender this year. Um, we don't yet exactly know everything that's happened. Uh, we certainly don't know the length of the suspension, though uh, there's a lot of speculation that it's about to be one year. Nothing has been confirmed by the Celtics organization, uh, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, but I mean, you know, this is happening, what, a week before media day and training camp opens up. This is, you know a complete crisis and it's just the worst possible time that it could happen. I I don't really know what else to say. Justin, flip side of the coin, where are we at in terms of the reporting here and how much toothpaste has left the bottle prematurely? Well, once upon a time, journalists use a code of ethics to make sure they have enough of a story to prevent damaging people involved in the organizations or other contexts that might be present. And we can talk about it more in a moment, but if your primary objective is to rush to publish over collecting the appropriate facts and protecting innocent bystanders, you are not doing journalism. You are doing something, but it is not journalism. Yeah. And, um, First of all, I know toothpaste comes in tubes, not bottles. So that idiom was incorrect. Um, but second, Justin, to your point, what's so frustrating about the leak economy and NBA Twitter mostly, I guess I, I assume it happens on other social media platforms, is yes, it's good for ESPN and The Athletic to be bouncing around with gossipy stories that uh, funnel you into athletic subscriptions or turning on Sports Center. But there are people attached to the story and the female staffer uh, or the, the ones that people think might be involved. A lot of names are getting dragged in the mud. A lot of speculation is online in a way that first of all is gross. Second of all is unfair. And third of all is potentially dangerous. Um, so what, what the reporting has done is yes, it's maybe it's a tool by the Celtics or by Udoka or by ESPN or whatever to drum up a public court of opinions prematurely. But the collateral damage is, uh, uh, I guess, a female staffer, Jane Doe, Celtics Jane Doe, who 
but now there's all of these names, people who have worked for the Celtics on the front office, on the coaching staff, et cetera, who I'm sure worked their entire lives to get to where they're at. And now they're nothing but a, a juicy tidbit and a bigger yarn of gossip. Um, I'm, I find myself very frustrated with the reporting, but, but I'll pivot slightly and say I'm very frustrated with Ime Joka. Uh, we all do impulsive things, um, but we are not all charged with great responsibility. And as the coach of the flagship organization for the NBA, there are a lot of people who are, are riding on and have a lot of money and dignity riding on the success of the Celtics team. And Udoka was a big part of their success last year and pulling the plug on this, a circus of uh, suspension, resigning, whatever comes next is staggeringly unfair to the players, to the people who work for that team, to the media partners and to the fans. Um, so I'm very frustrated with the state of the reporting and the discourse, but I am also, of course, very frustrated with Ime Udoka. Um, Alex and Justin, any other like immediate, just like, thoughts or half thoughts that you want to articulate before we kind of get into anything else that we might know about this? Just for people it, to move slowly with what they want to say about this and wait till they have facts before they jump to conclusions, speculate, gossip, whatever. I know it's, it's juicy. It's hard not to talk about it, but just talk about what you know, talk about what would be appropriate if something happened rather than what you think should happen, because we don't know what the facts are. Yet. So that's all I'm asking is just be, be patient as you can. Yeah, I think patience is the name of the game. I agree, Justin, and it is really frustrating. Um, I think that what's tough is that like tr trying to kind of plan for this season and think about like the basketball and how that is going to happen because we just can't move on into um, that territory until this is resolved. And the only thing in the world that I want right now is to be able to actually talk about like things like the Celtics on the court product that I'm just, I'm absolutely desperate to talk about meaningful basketball stuff. And it just, it feels like the, with everything that's kind of hovering over the franchise right now, that until this gets resolved, I just, I don't see how you can realistically expect the Celtics to like contend for a title until this is, until this has been resolved. We'll see much, much to be determined there, but th that's the kind of thing that can have a severe long-term impact and immediate impact. And I guess we're just in a holding pattern. Yeah. Uh, I, I will wade into the waters of speculation for a moment um, and say that short of a resignation or a, a firing, Alex, I think you're right that this becomes quite the rain cloud over the team for some period of time. Um, if the current reporting is to be believed, and I think we, we do think the good reporting is, is accurate. Um, I, at this point at four in the afternoon on Thursday, I am kind of hoping for a clean separation of some description. Um, but we suspect uh, that it will probably drag on much longer than a press release and a reunification a year from now. Um, so I suspect Alex, you're right. It's going to be ugly, not uh, a clean page turn. How's this for a page turn? I'm going to pause the action and talk about our friends at betonline.ag. Football is back and Bet Online remains your number one source for your football betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest football odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events bet MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use our promo code CLNS50 to receive that welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts. And in the interest of plugging things, please like and subscribe to our wonderful podcast. And last night we talked to Ronnie Duque from the NBA 2K franchise. That was a happier conversation. Those were simpler times. So if you, if you want to distract yourself or listen to these three bozos talk to Ronnie Duque, that's a fun conversation. I would, I would recommend that. Okay. 
a few more things we can talk about that we think we know anyways. Um, let's talk about my guy, uh, my friend, Joe uh, Missoula, who it seems like is widely being pegged as the interim head coach. Nothing is final. Nothing has been stated by the team, but um, a, lo- a lot Which of is a problem. Let's be clear about that. They PR, P, uh, sorry, I didn't interrupt, but no, 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 PR no, no. exists, PR, PR departments exist to get ahead of stuff like this. And uh, frankly, I'm a little disappointed. No, no offense to you guys, but I'm a little disappointed that you haven't said anything at this point. Something needs to be forthcoming soon. I digress. Uh, uh, we, we can talk about that for a little bit longer and then talk about uh, Joe. Um, it is worth pointing out that this is a relatively new front office that hasn't been tested with something, certainly nothing like this. Um, and to that end, the historical comparisons people are making to other suspensions or other replaced malfeasances, if the Celtics have, and I hope they do, specific language about this kind of transgression, there might be a cut and paste uh, disciplinary action. And if there was anything more to how an internal investigation went, I think a year long suspension is not that hard to dream up. So I think connections to other uh, suspensions in the past across sports, across the NBA, et cetera, are misguided because we don't have the right information yet. We don't have any information really. Um, Another thing I was gonna say, and then we'll talk about the coaching. Um, So younger front office, the Celtics PR team, and we won't get into the weeds, uh, have a little bit of turnover. There's still some old guard, but they're bringing in new people. And so it might just be that, you know, the chain of command wasn't set up. That's total speculation on my part. That is not reporting. Um, But it it might be the case that, yeah, Justin is upset with me. Fair enough. It might be the case that this was just the worst possible thing to happen to an organization that just did not have the infrastructure to deal with it. Um, So the lack of communication from the team is, is loud. Um, but perhaps a little explainable. It's explainable, but there's nothing saying we are aware of an ongoing internal situation. Sure. We are going to blah, 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 blah. They don't have to say anything, just acknowledge that there is a situation for starters. That would be good. Sure. So again, we don't know much, so we're not going to dwell too long. Um, Joe Missoula is 34 years old. He's been with the Boston Celtics since 2019. Um, prior to that, actually, he did coach the then Red Claws for a cup of coffee. Um, and has coached the college level reasonably successfully. Um, He has been with the team longer than most, um, but he is on the younger side. Uh, He's two years younger than Al Horford. Um, Dr. Quinn, anything I missed about his resume? There's not that much out there because there's not that much on it. Well, he is considered to be one of the more widely known uh, next up kind of coaching candidates. Uh, He was a lead candidate for the jazz position uh, under Danny Ainge. Obviously, Ainge is familiar with him. So it's not that crazy that they would put the trust in him. He's shown himself to be pretty competent in his job uh, when he is at the helm of the team. He probably does need a little bit of help, uh, particularly considering everything else that's going on. So the idea of bringing in somebody who is used to dealing with a chaotic locker room, like maybe Vogel, uh, is not such a bad idea. So I'm going to be curious to see uh, if that reporting does in turn, turn out to, in fact, be correct. Because assuming that he does become an interim coach and that Udoka is out, which, of course, may not happen, uh, probably he's going to need a little bit of help. Sure. It's worth pointing out that big ticket reporting sometimes gets it loud wrong. Um, so maybe all of this is for naught, but let's assume that the reporting's good. Let's assume that Missoula as the interim head coach is a matter of when, not if. Um, Alex reporting from Chris Mannix of uh, Sports Illustrated says that Frank Vogel, as Justin alluded to, might be brought in. Other than Brad Stevens' uh, friend of over a decade, why is that valuable? I mean, Vogel's proven that he's a pretty quality NBA coach. Obviously, you know, his last stint with the Lakers, he got canned from, I think there was a lot of other stuff around that that um, made that a reality. And ultimately, you know, I think the Russell Westbrook fit, there's a bunch of reasons why Frank Vogel uh, kind of lost his job with the Lakers. And I don't think a lot of them had to do with his coaching acumen. He's clearly proven that he is good at that job. Um, I do think I'm, I'm a little worried about bringing in Frank Vogel. On, on the one hand, Missoula probably never expected to be in this position. So I imagine getting him some help would make sense. 
I am a little wary about the idea of elevating an untested assistant coach who has never um, been an NBA head coach in a really precarious spot and then having a proven vet next to him in Vogel uh, only in the sense that I think if things go poorly, which given where we're at, there's a reasonable chance they might to start the season, uh, that could be a situation where Missoula finds his uh, him himself trying to establish authority while having a much more experienced vet on the bench. That, that could be a little dicey. It, it occurs to me, I, I am shaking in my little boots about all the negative permutations here, but it occurs to me that um, in 1979, Paul Westhead, very untested, took over on the fly of the Los Angeles Lakers. And not only did the Lakers win the title that year, he didn't last very long as coach. Um, so if Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and co are as legit as we think they are with respect to the institution of head coaching, it might be something they can survive. But this is a young team and Missoula is a young, young guy. Missoula's functionally my age. I mean, he's younger than Al Horford. Yeah, he's two years younger than Al. I mean, it's, uh, it's not been done before. Uh, a, a coach that young hasn't become a champion, but never say never, I suppose. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, listen, the Celtics' best title odds were Ime Odoka certainly did a great job with them last year, but. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, those are the guys that are going to determine whether the Celtics win the title or not. Uh, I think that is overwhelmingly so the case. I do think that um, I, I am concerned about the general instability that would come with uh, a both a departure and an elevation from Missoula in terms of the long run, a lot more so than I am for this season, frankly. Sure. And... The, the quickness with which he was tagged as the interim coach before much else was reported um, does suggest to me that this has been privately going on in Celtics land for at least a little bit. Um, but it's also, I said to Justin, maybe I'm incorrect about this, but from my purview, it's a very surprising vote of confidence. Um, but nothing is settled yet. Um, and bef- so I don't have to say it again. Any final thoughts? It might make sense to keep this a quickie we said what we thought we needed to say i think we summarized things as best we could it's now uh 4 20 on the east coast and um of course at 4 30 the press release is going to come out and blow this out of the water but uh, maybe we'll pause for here for now justin alex any any final thoughts i had another um, earthquake last night and that wasn't even the most stressful thing i'm dealing with <laughs> Alex, the only other thing I would jump in and say is at this point, I would be extremely surprised if Ime Odoka ever coaches another game for the Boston Celtics. It just, it seems, vi- I, I know that we're trying to avoid speculation, but with everything that's coming out, it just seems really, really difficult to imagine that working. And hey, crazier things have happened, but I'd be really surprised. And to that end, I don't think we think his NBA coaching career is done. Just, no. Yeah. Um, the toothpaste has left the glass um, or the bottle or whatever stupid thing I said. Uh, my final thought is a two for one NBA news. It should be illegal to break NBA news after 10 PM. And certainly at 1 45 AM um, it's not that important. The markets aren't going to shift the, the they're not going to mobilize the troops over this crap. So um, maybe just wait till the morning. You wait know? till you have the facts. Wait, yeah, that, yeah. get your facts. No Do journalism. That's- that's the main thing. I, and we haven't really talked about this that much and I don't want to keep people over, but at the same time, the the biggest story in my mind actually might be just how the NBA reporting has been around this. It's been incredibly shoddy and rushed and uh, frankly dangerous uh, to mm-hmm. a lot of people. And it's kind of jeopardizing their ability to work and be in a safe work environment. Um, so I'm going to get on the soapbox for a little bit here. Um, Shams, Woj, all you guys, you're being incredibly weird about this. And in the, in the rush to get that scoop, in the rush to beat out whatever other guy you're competing with, um, you are not practicing anything close to good journalism ethics. So slow the fuck down and stop. 
let me just also add, we, we talked about this a little bit off air. Uh, there's been a lot of comparisons to the SARS situation for the wrong reason, but as far as the reporting goes, it's a very good comparison because Baxter Holmes got scooped by someone who heard about his reporting and broke, broke the news. But are we talking about that person right now? Obviously not, because Baxter Holmes did his job, did it well, very, very well, and it had consequential results that are the better for the league and the better for journalism and the better for society as a whole. So let's do that. Yeah. Um, and as individuals um, slow down with retweeting and sharing speculative news, but also there's just some creepy stuff people are posting. Um, I love some celebrity drama, but if you care about the NBA and you care about the people involved, uh, a little compassion. And I said to Justin, just stating what we know is enough to get clicks. You don't need to drag people's names through the mods or, or, or say some gross stuff. And well, frankly, if you know, if you're bringing um, Udoka's uh, partner or perhaps ex-partner into this, that's pretty gross too. Um, so I don't know. It was an ugly day, and it continues to be an ugly day. Probably have to talk about it some more sometime soon. So hit that subscribe button so you never miss another wonderful episode of this podcast. We'll be, media days on Monday. We'll be back at some point. Yes. Yeah,